So today we will discuss the malignant otitis externa. So what is malignant otitis externa? It is a uh, vicious infection in which soft tissue pathogens have spread to the peristium and temporal bone of the skull causing necrosis. The term necrotizing otitis externa is be used for aggressive soft tissue infection without bone involvement. So there is a difference between malignant otitis externa and necrotizing otitis externa. We have to recognize this. So in necrotizing, we don't have bone involvement. In malignant, we have bone involvement. So autogenic skull-based osteomyelitis refers to more severe uh, clinical entity. So coming to the epidemiology. So it is most frequently affecting elderly and diabetes. National incidence is 421 in 2012-13. The reported prevalence of diabetes in these children ranges from 65% to 100% of the adult patients. In children, diabetes is not most common comorbidity. 21%. Okay. Patients are usually older than 60 years of age and there is a male preponderance with a ratio of 2 is to 1. Other predisposing factors. So let's discuss what are other predisposing factors. So HIV AIDS pseudomonas CD4 counts uh, less than 100 cells per millimeter cube and aspergillus less than 50 cells per millimeter cube. Steroid uses chemotherapy, anemia, leukemia, lymphoma, neoplasia, renal transplantation, insulin, immunoglobin, IgA deficiency, IgG, subclass deficiency, AML, heterogenic neutropenia, and bone marrow transplantation. So causative agent bacteria. Uh, so what are the common causative agents? So these are pseudomonas aeruginosa is most common. So uh, that's why the commonly question asked in this topic is what are the pseudo uh, anti pseudomonal antibiotics? So staphylococcus or staphylococcus aureus, staphylococcus epidermidis, proteus mirabilis, Klebsiella oxytoca, Klebsiella pneumonia, Burkholderia sinocephea, and Enterobacter cloacea, Enterococcus constitutalis. So, coming to the what are the common fungus? Aspergillus fumigatus, Aspergillus niger, Aspergillus flavus, Candida, uh, then Malassezia uh, sympodialis, uh, then Cidasosporium angiosperma, more commonly associated in immunocompromised HIV AIDS than diabetes. So, fungal will be more common in immunocompromised individuals, so HIV AIDS. Mejadoga compared to diabetes. Originate most often in middle year or menstrual, worse prognosis. So, fungal hair, worse prognosis. Coming to the pseudomonal, uh, MOE. So these are what are pseudomonas? Gram negative obligate anaerobe. These are gram negative obligate aerobe. Sorry, aerobe. Uh, uh, these are opportunistic. What do you mean by obligate? They will uh, survive only in the presence of oxygen. So these are opportunistic ability to invade local vasculation and form a focal coagulative necrosis of the surrounding tissue. Virulent species have a uh, mucoid surface layer that confers additional protection against phagocytosis. So produce lytic enzyme, for example, collagenase, elastase, and endotoxins, uh, resulting in a necrotizing vasculitis. Neurotoxins, uh, which likely play a role in the development of cranial neuropathy. So we commonly see neuropathies in this this is so coming to the cinemas erogenosa this is the culture uh, this is on a culture plate this is under microscopic so it spread it spread to the skull base from the external auditory canal through fissures of central renae. So remember this fissure of central renae. At the ost osteocatalysis junction, the uh, infection is spread medially to the tympanomastoid suture along venous canal and facial planes invading corrective tissue, cartilage, and bones. Can spread medially and subsequently affect nerves around the jugular foramen. Further spread of disease can affect abducens and trigeminal nerves around the petrous apex and also the optic nerve. Septic thrombosis of the sigmoid sinus and internal jugular vein may also occur. So, the septic thrombosis of the sigmoid sinus and internal jugular vein may also occur. So, coming to the pathology, the inflammatory process alters the morphology of the compact bone of the skull base, changing it into the granulation tissue. Histologically, new bone formation is observed next to the areas where bone has been destroyed. The otic capsule and middle layer structures are very resistant. So, remember this. Otic capsules and middle layer structures are very resistant and if ever involved, rarely if ever involved in the disease. So what are the clinical features? The clinical features are very important. What are otalgia? There is nocturnal otalgia, deep lancinating and disproportionate to the clinical side. It's often resistance to analgesics. Pur purulent otalgia, hearing loss is usually conductive. Sensor needle hearing loss is usually due to the pre-existing presbycosis, so as it is common in the older age. So facial paralysis, 25% of patients due to involvement of the stylomastoid foramen. So followed by the cranial loss, 9th, 10th, so fresh facial are most common, 
7, then 9, 10, 11, 12, and then 6 and 2. Children develop facial nerve paralysis earlier. Medial fissure underdeveloped. Sorry, okay, medial fissure. So meningitis can, uh, uh, patient can manifest meningitis, cerebral abscess, and sigmoid sinus thrombosis, parotitis and trismus due to mesenteral myositis and temporomandibular joint involvement. Complications in children include necrosis of the tympanic membrane, stenosis of the EAC, and auricular deformity, and sensorineural hearing loss. Recurrence rate of 15% to 20% have been reported for MOE. So uh, this we can see the uh, on uh, endoscopic picture, this granulation tissue. So, so coming to the Levinson's criteria, Levinson's criteria is very important. It is commonly asked in the exam. So what is the major criteria and minor criteria? What, what is the major criteria? Pain, exudate, edema, granulation, microapsis, phenopterate, positive ticanium 99. Minor criteria, uh, minor criteria, pseudomonas in culture, diabetes mellitus, old age, cranial nerve involvement, positive radiograph, debilitating conditions. So clinical pathologic staging. So staging. Uh, Let's discuss staging. Uh, in stage one, clinical evidence of malignant or external external with infection of the soft tissue beyond the external audit canal. So it is beyond the external audit canal and negative technetium 99 bone scan. Two care soft tissue infection beyond audit, external auditory canal with positive technetium. So in this one is uh, just beyond the beyond the EAC, but negative technetium 99. But two in two we have positive technetium 99 and soft tissue infection beyond the uh, so three, we have uh, cranial nerve palsy. Three, three, three is single uh, cranial nerve palsy. Three is multiple. Four is meningitis in pyoma, sinus thrombosis, or brain abscess. So four is deadly one. What is the differential diagnosis? So it can be the carcinoma of the ear canal, granulomatous disease, badges disease, nasopharyngeal malignancies, clival lesions, fibrous dysplasia. So what is the diagnostic radiology? What we uh, do uh, in the diagnosis? Uh, for the diagnosis of these in radiology, HRCT, we can do HRCT, CCT, MRI, technetium 99, scintigraphy, gallium 67, citroid, or indium 111. So, coming to the HRCT, high resolution computer tomography is valuable in diagnosing bony lesions and reduced density of the skull bones. However, it only detects bony demineralization of 30%. So, HRCT will detect bony demineralization only it is 30% or greater. So, this we have. CCT. Contrast enhanced CT scan is useful in evaluating the extent and severity of the extratemporal soft tissue involvement, abscess formation, mastoid and temporomandibular joint involvement, as well as progression of disease to the petrous effects and carotid canal can be demonstrated on CT scan. MRI. Uh, so magnetic resonance imaging is generally good at soft tissue differentiation and skull-based osteomyelitis can depict bone marrow edema. Nuclear imaging. What we uh, see nuclear imaging, technetium 99. So technetium 99, so uh, amethylene diphosphate, we do, and technetium 99, uh, hydroxymethylene diphosphate, scintigraphy, we do, gallium 67 is for scanning. Indium, label leukocyte, we do, uh, indium 111, label leukocyte scintigraphy. Technetium scintigraphy has almost 100% sensitivity. It is a radio tracer that accumulates in the area of high osteoblastic activity, even in the cases, early cases of disease. It has low specificity and is positive in malignancy. So, it is not specific, but it is sensitive. Histological confirmation is important. However, it can't distinguish between active infections and bone remodeling. So, otitis externa malignancy. Uh, see. Then gallium 67 scan. Often utilized to monitor treatment response. So, gallium 67 is used to monitor treatment response. Based on the propensity of the gallium 67 citrate to accumulate in areas of active inflammation in both soft tissue and bone, it should ideally be repeated every four weeks. So gallium should be reported every four uh, weeks to monitor response to antibiotic only un until it is no longer positive. So every four weeks we do gallium. This is gallium scan. So indium labeled uh, leukocyte scintigraphy. It detects the neutrophil mediated inflammation. It detects neutrophil mediated inflammations. So single photon emission computer tomography spec. We call it spec. So single photon emission tomography spec creates 3D pictures using indium 111 or gallium 67, which optimize anatomical localizations. Or uh, study shows that FDG PET was most accurate in confirming or ex excluding Mm, osteomyelitis. So, uh, what we do in management, we do oral toilet, diabetes should be controlled, uh, patient is put on anti antibiotics and antifungals, hyperbaric oxygen or surgery. Oral toilet enables to control granulations and pain. 
uh, antibiotic drops may alter the culture sensitivity reports. Uh, achieve good glycemic control, systemic antibiotic. So antibiotics on an average continue for at least six to eight weeks, depending on the resolution of symptoms. Uh, but in advanced cases could be administered for months. Some experts advocate parenteral antimicrobials converted to oral once the serum C-reactive protein or ESR starts to decline. In ideal setting, antimicrobial therapy should be continued as long as the gallium cysteine can uh, remains positive. So uh, these questions uh, is asked in the final, uh, final PGYV exams, anti-serumenal group of antibiotics. So we have carboxypenicillin. What, uh, what are the drugs we have carbo in carboxypenicillin? Ticarcillin, Timocillin. Uh, so, Ticarcillin. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> uh, so, greater antisodominal activity and less sodium load than carboxypenicillin. So, Timocillin, 6-alpha methoxy substitutions give long half-life and more resistance against beta-lactamase enzymes. So, uh, in a uh, group of Iridae and uh, piperazine or penicillins, uh, uh, we have azulocillin, acyl derivative of urea as a side chain. Piperazine, uh, so uh, piperazine side uh, chain not used in cystic, cystic fibrosis because of adverse reaction. So we have cephalosporin, we have septazidine. This is third generation. Amino glycoside, we have gentamicin, topramicin, amicacin. Gentamicin toxicity of new glycoside is based on the accumulation major side effect on an ear and kidney. Uh, measure serum trough and peak levels at uh, third dose and re uh, regulate afterwards. Quinolone, we have ciprofloxacin, only oral antisodominal, only oral antisodominal antibiotic. This is very important. This can be asked in the exam. Monobactam, may, we have estrionam. Narrow uh, narrow spectrum actions, gram-positive superinfection may be a problem if used alone. Carbapenem, miropenem, and imipenem. Members of a new class of beta-lactam called the thionamines, uh, uh, thionamicins, imipenem has to be combined with inhibitor uh, uh, celastasin to block renal metabolism, but miropenem is stable to the renal injury. Beta lactamase inhibitor, uh, so tazosin, piperacillin, and tazovector, polymixin, colomixin. So, broadly, if someone will tell, you can already say that uh, we have in cephalaris, cephalaris then we have quinolone, we have carboxypenicillin, we have beta lactamase inhibitor, polymixin. So, five. So antibiotic therapy, fluoroquinolones and tisodominal have very good penetrations and orability. This is have a good uh, osteopenetration, that's why it is given, and have very few side effects. Monotherapy with oral ciprofloxacin, 750 milligram twice a day is the preferred initial reason. Addition of rifampicin, 600 mg twice daily has also been suggested. Monotherapy with the other anti antimicrobials or in combination can be considered in cases of resistant infections. Antifungal, amphotericin B is the, amphotericin B is the, Amphotericin B is the antifungal agent of choice for skull based stimulitis of the fungal origin. Oral itraconazole may be used after a successful course of amphotericin B. Hyperbaric oxygen. What is the role of hyperbaric oxygen? It increases the partial pressure oxygen, relieving hypoxia, and enhances the oxidative killing of the microbes. You, we know that oxygen is also a, um, uh, what do you, you can say, the poison for many microbes. However, the benefits are controversial. Uh, Surgery has a limited role in the management. It is primarily performed to obtain specimen for culture to locally debride granulation tissue and to exclude malignancy. May be necessary to remove dead sequestra and drain, uh, drain associated abscess. Uh, so I guess. So I guess you will uh, have got good understanding of the topic. Hope we'll come with more topics in our next.